right, I wanted to cover a few quick things. Uh, some background on the MPRI, why it exists. Uh, I'll try to move quite quickly through that. Um, some of the changes over time, as we've asked, been asked to, to highlight some of those changes that have happened in our system. And uh, just one slide about uh, some of the recommendations we recently received from the Office of the Auditor General in Canada. So about the NPRI, I'm going to highlight this a little bit because it's a little bit different from, uh, from, from some of the other systems. Uh, the NPRI is Canada's legislated publicly accessible inventory, um, air pollutant releases to air, water, land. The NPRI includes two main components. And one is the mandatory reporting by facilities, um, over 8,000 facilities, 366 pollutants uh, for 2010. Um, that's the key area that, uh, for discussion in, in this forum. But it does also, under the umbrella of the NPRI in Canada, we include the comprehensive air pollutant emission estimates. And these provide information on all sources, so transportation, home heating, um, for specific air pollutants, persistent organic pollutants, things like that. Why does it exist? Um, the NPRI exists, and we saw some of the objectives uh, before, earlier, and, and in, in your handout as well. Um, it's really about understanding um, pollutant releases, Filling international reporting. I won't go into a lot of detail, but publication of the MPRI, MPRI also exists because it's mandatory under the Canadian Environmental Protection Act 1999. So to put things in a little bit of context, uh, this goes into a little bit about how NPRI, the overall picture of NPRI has evolved over time. It's more, initially it was about public, public information, um, some of the things I, 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 we saw on the last slide. It has evolved a little bit in that it's, it's now increasingly important to support things like the Canada's Chemicals Management Plan, which is assessing and managing risks from chemicals, um, risk management activities for sectors, uh, specifically our air quality management system, which is talking about reducing uh, air pollutant emissions and Im improving air quality in Canada, and supporting air quality modeling and forecasting, which relates to the, the bullet above. And another point of context, NPRI data doesn't stand alone. It's complemented by a variety of other data sources. For example, we have a, a kind of our, our sister program, Greenhouse Gas uh, Emissions Reporting Program and a national uh, greenhouse gas inventory. And um, also monitor, monitoring data on air, water, air and water quality monitoring, for example. Those are just a few examples of the other data sources that complement the NPRI. So how do we make the data available? Uh, it's four key formats. Uh, there's an online query site, uh, which allows you to, to search basically facility reports quite easily. Uh, you get an Excel, uh, there, we've made, recently made available an Excel format, um, which is a little bit easier to use than the database itself, which is the third format, Microsoft Access. And um, we also have moved forward with making map layers available with Google Earth, and that's a, a key way that a lot of users like to, to see our data. Um, it's a much more visual format. So the latest uh, data we've released is for 2010. Um, it was released in March, 20, March of 2012. I won't go into a lot of detail, but uh, the, the light purple there, I don't know if you can read it, but the, the light purple, the biggest area, of course, is our criteria air contaminants, so it's things like SOX, NOx, VOCs. Um, the darker purple is the releases of all other substances, so kind of the, the toxics, um, as we're referring to them here. And then some of the other colors are, are the other types of disposals, transfers for recycling, those type of things. Um, as I mentioned, there are over 8,000 facilities reported um, for 2010. And talking about in the context of changes over time, when we saw total releases to air, water, and land fell by 19% from 2006 to 2010. That gives a quick snapshot. Um, I don't have quite as, as nice of a, a graph to show as Steve did with the, showing the changes over time, but this also shows the number of facilities reporting is in the green and the number of listed substances is in red. So as you can see, from around 1999 through to 2001, and then a, a little bit over time, we have had the red line shows a, a lot of increases in substances reported to the MPRI. Um, in 2002 was one of our biggest changes, uh, adding the air pollutants, uh, the criteria air contaminants to the MPRI. Um, so you, you can see that the, list, the substances listed are, are going up over time. Um, 
the 2002 and 2003 is the big change in the green line there, facilities reporting, and that, that was both the introduction of reporting on criteria air contaminants in 2002, as well as the removal of an exemption for oil and gas extraction in 2003. So that uh, brought about a huge increase in the number of facilities reporting to our program. Within this as well, not just addition of substances, but we have reduced thresholds for a lot of substances, similar to what uh, Steve had talked about, but substances such as cadmium, arsenic, lead, dioxins, and furans. Over time, we've reduced the thresholds, so we capture much more reporting on those. There is a document that describes this on our website, one page that goes, uh, it's, a, it's a long page, but goes over all the changes we've made over time. I gave the link to that. I think the presentations will be available. Uh, yeah, so. So I highlighted a little bit some of the changes that have happened uh, since 2005, since the, the last action plan. Uh, I'll just go over them really quickly. We had uh, one of the key ones was removing of the mining exemption and pits and quarries, which happened in over 2006 and 2007 um, years. We've added a number of substances, PAHs and VOCs, for example. Um, there are a couple of changes that I've highlighted that um, were related to the CC action plan for comparability. But as has been mentioned previously, sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to make changes to the program, so you're not going to see a lot of changes, but there were definitely some changes that streamed directly from the action plan for comparability. I see in 2007, and, and this is something I guess we'll need to discuss a little more, but um, we had uh, changed our, our reporting requirements for docs and appearance, so I'm interested to hear more about why the data are comparable, and uh, maybe I don't know enough details about that, but because I thought we'd done some work to address that, but that's probably, I'm sure we'll be discussing that. Yeah. A um, few minor changes over time. I highlight in 2009, we had a, a, a large change with, we brought in tailings and waste rock reporting um, as of 2009 and onwards, as well as retroactively to 2006. Um, and um, in 2011, one of the changes we did reduce the threshold for selenium. Uh, to, to quite a low threshold comparable to some of the other metals, and that's because we were seeing gaps in reporting for that substance. Um, highlighting some of the potential changes for requirements for the future, we have uh, a number of proposals. Uh, the first two of these bullets highlight some proposals we've received from external sources uh, from environmental organizations, uh, this addition of naphthenic acids, uh, which is relevant for oil sands, uh, tailings in particular as well as there was an addition of 10 substances that were recently added to the US TRI. So um, we are in the process of considering those. Um, information as it becomes available will be posted on our website if you're interested in following those. We are looking into some possible changes to reporting of particulate matter and total reduced sulfur. Um, and we're, we're looking at them for possibly 2013, but more likely 2014. Uh, we are taking a, a look at a review of the MPRI substance list, and this is trying to catch up a little bit to the progress that's been made under our chemicals management plan in terms of assessing substances as toxic or moving forward with management actions. So coming out of this, we may see some possible additions, threshold changes, and removals, possibly mo removals. And we do have, as well underway, a review of reporting from the oil and gas extraction industry, um, looking at possibly collecting more information from that sector, possibly in different ways. Um, so that's, uh, that's an important area of work. So as Steve, Steve mentioned as well, it's not just the requirements, it's the data access tools. So we have made some improvements, um, upgrading our website, um, map layers for Google Earth, as I mentioned, linkages between MPRI data and other data, such as the air inventories and the greenhouse gas reporting, making that a little more easy for people to do. Um, a simplified spreadsheet format, um, addition of new geographic data fields, and making the, all the data available back to 1993. And I'd like to mention that um, some of the, a lot of these improvements were driven by input from stakeholders such as yourself at forum, such as this. Um, so it, we, we do try to get the input in on what people want to see happen to the program and take it, uh, you know, move it forward where we can. Future improvements, um, we expect a better online data search that will allow integrated searching and with a lot more functionality. And that's the project's taking a while to get uh, to see the light of day, but uh, within the next few years, we hope to have that up and running. Um, and that'll 
try to improve uh, access to our data. I think, uh, I think this is my last slide, I think. Um, so we're close. I just wanted to highlight a little bit. Uh, in 2009, we got some recommendations from our Office of the Auditor General about the, basically MPRI quality data and whether it's uh, fit for the intended use of its clients. Uh, there were five recommendations about more regular, including more regular consultations with data users, strategy for improving the data, improving understanding of coverage and compliance, and expanding contextual information. And so we are making progress on each of these and um, documents will be becoming available on our website um, as, uh, as we move forward.